YouTube! My name is Amethyst from Amethyst Creations and welcome to the second episode of Junk Journal Ephemera that I'm making into a series. I think I'm going to call it Junk Mail Journaling Ephemera. Maybe. I'm still playing with the title. But here we are today with the envelopes for this episode, I guess you can say. So, I don't know about you. But I tend to get a lot of credit card uh, junk mail, or just junk mail in general. And I noticed every time I opened it, they have these really cool prints on the inside of the envelopes, as you can see on some of these examples. And the reason why is they have these is, like if you guys don't know, it's literally just for security measures. But each company has their own little, little print going on there, and I really like it. Like this one looks like um, tile. You know, like a really cylindrical tile kind of look. And I really like it. It's like almost floral. And so I decided to make it into a junk journal piece. And here's kind of an example of what I mean. Um, this is not what we're going to make today. We're going to make it slightly bit different. But I made something like this. And I made this completely for holding onto pieces of paper. Like uh, scrap pieces and stuff like that which we'll be using today. But all I did was take an envelope, open it up, and cover it completely um, with extra pieces of paper that I had. And yeah, I just really like how it came out. And because I did the double layer of like, um, I guess you could say collaging, um, it made it extra sturdy, which is really nice. You can also double up. So if you have like two envelopes that are exactly the same, you can go ahead and just double them up together and glue them together. And that's an option. So for this one, for the main body, I'm deciding to use this envelope from Discover because it's kind of a goldish tone, but I really like the swirls. And it's also kind of slightly raised, like you can feel the texture on it. And I don't know, it feels really neat. And with it came this cool looking portfolio, I guess, like threefold. Trifold? There we go. Trifold. And it has a little pocket. I was like, this is really neat. I'm going to use this. Like, why not? So there we go. And I'm just going to set this aside because we'll build on this one later. But I have a whole lot of little pieces to go along with uh, filling up the inside of this. I'm just going to grab those. So this one, I'm actually going to use paper. So just straight up different kinds of paper on the inside and kind of collage it together to strengthen up the envelope because by itself, it's super flimsy. It won't hold to multiple uses. It's just not strong enough, like opening and closing or adding extra weight, like um, other ephemera holding it into the pages. So we're going to go ahead and reinforce that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and open this up by following along with the seam line of the envelope. All right. So this is a letter opener. This is really useful. You don't have to have one. If you want to, you can use a piece of scissors, a piece of scissors, <laughs> a pair of scissors and just cut along like this. I don't typically like doing it that way because my hands kind of shake a little and then it ends up with a, like a wonky line. So I like using a uh, letter opener. And plus it also feels like I'm using a sword, which is kind of fun. I know. Don't be welding this crazily. That's just me. So what I'm doing is I'm gently going along the seam and I'm just opening it this way. All right. All right there we go. Just folds up in like that. And it's super important when you're trying to open an envelope, especially if you're trying to use it for a folder or whatever, to try to go along with the seam line as much as possible. Because you can see here, I kind of tore it. And so when I lay it out flat, it's not going to be like a clean line or anything. But that's okay. You can just cut it off if you want to. Or you can keep it rough and just do like a torn edge kind of look. The thing is, if you do a torn edge, trying to reinforce the torn edge is a little bit more tricky. It's not impossible, but it's just, it takes a little bit more effort. So, I have a whole bunch of paper here. Just a whole bunch. But it's kind of fun. And I'm going with this 
really kind of a textured paint look. Piece of paper, like, uh, what are these called? Deco pages? That I got. Let's see. This one came from this nifty thing that I got a while back. Uh, I think I got this from Walmart. I'm fairly certain I got this from Walmart. You can use whatever that you have, really, honestly. You don't you don't even need to use these. You can just use uh, pieces of paper, um, like I showed from the previous example, where I just collaged it together with different uh, paper from different books, actually. And I just, like, literally flipped them upside down and turned them around and all that fun stuff. And it really leads to a really cool collage look, and I really like it. So you don't have to use paper like this. I just decided to use it because I wanted to have um, something to go along with the gold color of the envelope. And because I want the gold to show as much as possible, I wanted something a little bit fun as a print in the inside as well. So, go ahead and go like this. What I'm doing is I'm trying to match up with the seam line for here. So what I like doing is matching up the edges of where I want this paper to mostly cover. And because we're kind of going with the gold, uh, I kind of want to leave as much of the yellow as possible. So there we go. You don't have to be this accurate. You can really just glue it and then cut off the edges if you want to. It's nice to be as accurate as possible in the first go, but it's not necessary because <laughs> this is junk journaling. It's, it's fine if it's a little bit wonky, get a little bit creative, make it work kind of thing. So I'm using a bone folder and just pressing down the seam line just so it lays a little bit flatter. Um, you can buy these off of Amazon. This is where I got this one from. So I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys are interested in finding the same thing that I'm using. But you don't have to. You can literally use the end of a plastic th item that's just slightly rounded so it doesn't tear the paper. That's all you really need. You can use the side of your thumbnail if you want. Um, I've used credit cards. It's whatever you have available. All right. I'm kind of wondering if I want to leave this as kind of like a pocket. Oh, it's too stuck. Oh, well, whatever. I think I'm gonna leave it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on here. I am okay with using double-sided sticky tape. If you were watching my last episode, I use double-sided sticky tape. It's just easier for me um, when it comes to doing projects quickly. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can use glue, you can use stick glue, um, I'm trying to think else what else you can use. <laughs> contact cement? I will be honest, I don't really like using contact cement that much. I do for like certain projects, but not when it comes to paper. I feel like it's more of a pain. But if that's your deal, then you do it. Especially if you want it to be a really, really strong permanent hold. Contact cement, yeah, I can see it happening. It, that Once you contact cement two things together, it's not coming apart. I'm trying to get this to stick a little bit better. This, unfortunately, on the inside is a little bit of a, a really smooth texture. Almost, It's very, like, almost laminated. So it is a little bit difficult for just to wind the stick very well. Not impossible, just needs motivation. I'm just going across and getting some extra glue on this paper here. Alright. 
Now what I like to do is just to put glue on one side, put the paper on where I need it to be, and then glue the other side. So what I like to do is match up the edge here as much as possible. One of those days. Let's fold it. Make it easier. There we go. And glue it down. Glue it all around. There we go. So it's gonna be the back edge. There's a piece of glue on there. So, I'm debating whether I want to leave that. I'm not using glue. We'll use red. And to kind of break this up a little bit, because it's like super red compared to gold, it's kind of cool, but I feel like I need to add a little bit more interest in there. So, and I like swirls. I am very much love swirl motifs things like that of that nature so I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of gold to this part of the paper and this is I I don't even know this is steam flourish steam flourish by Dina Kowal and I'm pretty sure I got this at Joann's don't quote me on that one I'm not positive but I'm pretty sure can't really quite see that on camera. I'm wondering if it'll do better if I use an oxide. Before I'm going to do that, I'm going to wipe off the stamp because I don't want gold <laughs> on my Distress Oxide pad. Let that air dry a little bit. And if you're curious about the paper, I got this from... Hobby Lobby and it's Old World Winter. So if you're interested in getting this one, it was a Christmas sale. So it might not be in stock right now, but it's there during Christmas time, if you wish. That's what I assume. There we go. Yeah. So I'm using the Distress Os Distressed Oxide pumice stone. Let's go ahead and see how this shows up. I'm gonna turn this a little so I have a fresh see fresh side. Okay. You can't really see it on this paper. Hmm. I'm giving in. I'm giving in and using my Versa ink pad. There we go. That shows up pretty good. I have an idea now. I have ideas. You will see this a lot. I will always have ideas. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and edge this a little with I think I'm gonna use a walnut stain because it's a darker stain and I do want this to show up this paper doesn't really want to ink very well and I've noticed that because I tried using it with um, tea dyeing and stuff it didn't do anything really so it's definitely fun to experiment with um, different kinds of printed paper it's just a hit or miss of whether or not it takes a die. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. That's better. 
I just wanted to have a little bit of interest in the pocket so it's there if there's nothing in the pocket but if there is something in the pocket it's not a big deal like kind of thing it's just playing with it so with that being said I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to attach this to this page and then I'm going to go ahead and glue this, all this together. So first things first. Let me go ahead and do this way. So what I'm going to go ahead and glue this side now, so this can just fold over. So I want this to be a pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue the sides here, just like that. want to make this a smaller pocket so I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit closer to the window here and there's a reason for that is you can set, kind of see where the edges of the plastic is I'm kind of trying to avoid um, having anything bigger than the edges so it doesn't rub up against it and eventually peel away the plastic because that can happen it just depends on the quality of the envelope really close it up. Go. So I like pushing it from the very fold so when it folds over it folds over flat because if you try to fold it over in the middle and it's not aligned properly you're gonna end up with a weird bubble. That's just how it happens. So try to fold over at the base of wherever the fold starts. So now you have a cute little pocket and you can put in whatever you want. Let's try this. That's cute. But I'm going to take that up for now and we're going to go ahead and trim it to fit. You can use an X-Acto knife, you can use a... Oh, I don't know. You can use all sorts of things. Actually, I'm gonna use this. Ah, Frisker's cutter. This is also a good time to clear off, like clean off the edge a little bit if you end up cutting the paper a little bit rough when you opened up the envelope. If you want, you can just get a little bit, like a one eighth of an inch in and clean off that edge. Personally, it doesn't really bother me that much if it's a bit rough. I don't know. When it comes to junk journaling, I kind of like a little bit of a rough edge on things deckle edges on pages and that kind of thing. I don't know. I always like looking at it. So here we are with this. And let's see. We're going to go ahead and start covering up a lot of these like no annual fee. Like <laughs> I don't know about you but I don't want to look at that. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us out there would not want to look at that. 
We see enough advertisements out there. We don't need to add any more. So, hmm. Nah, I'm not going to use that. I'm kind of wondering breaking up this pattern. As much as I like it, I don't want to be the whole focal point. So what I'm going to do is cut off this. And distress the edges a little. So the image pops out a little. There we go. There's so many different ways to distress something. What's your guys' favorite way of distressing things? Like I kind of just use a mixture of pressing it down and rubbing it over like this, or just straight up brush it on the edge. But I've seen people use like paintbrushes and paint on distress paint. I actually have some uh, distress stain. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. Distress stain that I've used on a couple pages. I don't use it nearly as often as I thought I was going to use it. But I'm kind of curious to get how you guys do it. And let's see. That's a little bit better. Center it like a picture frame. <laughs> uh, probably not. Maybe I'll center it. Just slightly. Because I want to cover the words. I don't want any words showing. Maybe like that. Maybe. Where was I? I'll leave it like that. And let me add some butterflies. I'm all for butterflies. Let me see if there's anything else I can use. Now I need something right there. Hmm. Kind of curious to see what would happen here. Sometimes I just like inking things, staining things on top of paper, and using the paper later. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does that, but please let me know if you do. <laughs> I think it's so much fun when I end up getting paper and has kind of a, um, what's it called? Um, oh, it's a word for it. It's an art style mod i think it's called a mod kind of art style where there's like different layers of colors are blocked off there we go i like that you see you kind of have a weird print going on a stencil i guess you can say and go like this so i don't really care about the words now because you can't like they're blocked off by lace. They're not really that big of a deal. If it bothers you, you can cover that up. But it doesn't really bother me, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put the lace on first, so the butterfly sticker will be covering up the edge. Okay. So this lace is really thin. 
really see through. So I'm just doing a thin layer of glue on here. Don't want to go too crazy because um, then you'll start seeing the shiny part of the glue more once it starts drying. Reflective nature of glue. So you just want to leave it kind of thin. Glue into place. You can also use double sided sticky tape. The reason I don't like using double sided sticky tape with lace and stuff is because the parts obviously that are holes in the lace, you can feel this tackiness through it sometimes. And I don't know. I don't really like the feel of it, so. I like using glue. There we go. Paint just fine. And for this, I'm using the three in one. You can also use fiber tuck. Fiber, uh, what is it? Fiber fix. That's what I use. I heard fiber tack before. Oops, dropped the bottle. I have not used fiber tack before, but fiber fix is what I use often. So if you're interested, there we go. Just this a tiny bit, just on the corners. Okay. Doesn't need a lot, just a little. I'm probably going to use the three in one a lot more for this project, just on the fact that this envelope is so slick. If I were to use a water-based glue like the Aileen's, I don't know if it's going to stick very well. You can try if you want to. Totally experiment with it. But I've noticed the, the envelopes that are more shiny, more laminated kind of feel, it doesn't work out so well because it just doesn't stick at all. But this kind of glue works really well. And I forgot what they call this. I was watching somebody talk about different kinds of glues and it's kind of late so my brain is just not really wanting to work very well so I can't really quite remember what category <laughs> this type of glue is. <laughs> like, like there's water-based PVC glue, um, there's this kind of glue, oh I don't remember. This is the only time my house is quiet is way late so do forgive me if I can't remember things but I really wanted to get this video out for you guys so that's what I'm doing and I hope you enjoy watching me do this as much as I enjoy doing this this is fun. It's like really therapeutic for me really. I started doing junk journaling. I am a perfectionist at heart and this was just what I needed to get me out of my perfectionist bubble. Like you can try to be a perfectionist with this stuff but really the fun part of junk journaling is the surprises. The little itty bitty things you can add to different objects and just make them that much more interesting and raw edges is fun you know so you may be wondering what I'm doing I'm kind of wondering on enclosing it if I should just put a lace and then do like a lace tie at the end I think that's what I'm gonna do so, my big spool of lace. You want to see how big this is? Look how big this is. <laughs> I got this as a gift and I was like, this is a lot of lace. And I love this lace. It's so pretty. It works so wonderfully for junk journaling. Um, originally I got it because I was, ah, I was going to make clothes out of it and everything. I was like, oh, this stuff is too rough. I never used it because it is, it's pretty rough. And I'm like, I don't want to use it on like clothes. It would not feel good. But when it comes to junk journaling, mm, perfect stuff. So 
So if it doesn't work for one thing, use it for another. You know? The way of life. Be creative. <laughs> I got I got a um oh. Who who said it? It was uh I keep on wanting to say Reading Rainbow. It is not Reading Rainbow. It is a Magic School Bus. Get messy, make mistakes. I know there's people out there that know what I'm talking about. But yeah. And the reason why I'm going on a lighter color, slightly lighter color for um, aging this, staining the lace, is because I want it to kind of be a little bit different. Because I'm planning to put two lines of lace vertically and this one is going to go horizontally on the envelope so I want it to be a slightly bit lighter in color. I'm going to age the inside of the ribbon too but right now I just need to figure out how much lace is going to be used for the envelope, attaching it to the envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue, glue line right here, find the halfway point of the lace, wondering which direction. I should have decided this before I put the glue down. But it's not the end all. There we go. And gently push it. Push, 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 push. You're gonna get glue on your fingers. That's inevitable on this. So just rub your fingers together. It'll come right off. Whee! Oh my goodness, it reminds me of uh, woodworkers. <laughs> who was it that I was watching? I was watching a YouTube video, and there's this guy who did uh, boats. And he, I think he did... Uh, I'm trying to remember what he used. I think he used matchsticks. But it was like a, like a, all these dioramas and stuff like that just made out of matchsticks. It was amazing. And he's been doing it for so many years. The side because he has a a wooden table, and on the side of his table there's like because he would glue things, and then you'd wipe his finger on the side of the table. And no joke, the glue was like that thick, from just layer after layer of wood glue on the table. And I was just like looking at it. I was like, that's amazing. If you're that dedicated on uh, a craft or an inspiration, that kind of thing, for so long that you literally have years of glue worth, like, worth of glue on your table to be that thick. It's amazing. And my, um, yeah, my husband, uh, grandpa, who used to be a woodworker, he also had the same thing, like, going to the woodworking bench, like, he has a a storage place, and then you go in there and there's like thick glue on the side of the table. It's crazy. It's cool. I think it's really cool to see like that kind of... I don't know, I feel like it's almost like a story. You see the physical evidence of somebody's story. And I think that's really, really neat. I think my story is going to be little pieces of paper. <laughs> like things like this. Or little scrap pieces of paper. It's going to be just a huge pile of it. I literally have a box in my office right now that's just paper. Like scraps of paper to use for different projects, that kind of thing, for junk journaling. Different pieces of lace and all that stuff. Pretty sure people I'm pretty sure you guys understand what I'm getting at if you're like me who likes to 
hold on to those little pieces just for other ephemera down the line. I like it this way. I'm gonna leave it like this. <laughs> and again, another bead of glue. And I'm not gluing right directly to this line. I'm gluing a little bit away from it. So the window is still as open as possible, but just barely covered by lace. There you go. And the smoothest line that you can make is actually pulling it towards you, then going sideways. Because if you try to go sideways, making a straight line is not as easy. But if you pull it towards you, from my experience, it, you end up with a straighter line. Make sure that's glued down. Ooh. I am liking this. So much. All right. I feel like I need to add a little bit more here. Like, add a little bit more each and every time. Hmm. But what should it be? What should it be? Oh! <gasps> Ooh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Hold on. Hold on. That's gonna be a second. All right. So in my wonderful box, <laughs> I went to, uh, what is it? Secondhand store or thrift store? And they had a ton of these cigarette boxes. I love these. They're so cool. I do not smoke. <laughs> But these boxes are cool. Like, I just love how they look. And so in it, I have a wax seal cake, like, set going on. You don't have to have one of these. Absolutely not. I saved up for this because I really wanted one. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to get one. I don't know. And I kept on debating. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to give in. I'm just going to do it. So there we go with that. And if you're curious, I'll go ahead and link in the description uh, box where, like, uh, I believe I got this set off of Etsy. And so, if you want, you can get the same thing. You can also just straight up, they have wax seals now where you can just get them where they're already pre-made. And you just kind of just glue it to whatever you're using it for. But, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun to do this. I do want to let you know that this glue, as well as wax, like this... I wouldn't say this brand I notice any smell, but... It's just a good idea to keep a window open for a well ventilation kind of thing. Especially with stronger smelling glues and things. You know, better safe than sorry. Gonna get that melted. Okay, now I gotta decide which seal that I'm gonna put on this. So I have two seals. I have this one and I have a llama. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with a llama. Just because it's bigger and I have four little cubes of uh, four little pieces of wax. That's a lot of wax for a, a small seal, so I'm gonna use the bigger seal for this. Alright. It went with a fancy handle. 
You don't have to get the fancy handle. I just decided that I want to have something that I like using. And if I'm exchanging this for all the different seals that I plan to end up getting, um, I just wanted a nice handle. But I also like the wood ones that they have. Those are cool. Alrighty, so I have that. And so what I'm planning is to actually, for this part, especially since this is going to be an area that has a lot of tension, I'm going to be waxing this just for an extra layer of uh, reinforcement. But also like a detail kind of thing. You know, let's have fun. So this is just a little piece of corrugated cardboard, cardstock? It's not really cardboard, it's really thin, like corrugated paper that I got from a packaging a while back and I was like, oh this is cool texture and I kept it. So. Ha! Ah, no, I ripped it. Alright, well, no good for that one. Let's try it again. This is fine. This time I won't press so hard. Oop! It melted! I need to hurry! Hurry! Okay. Get the seal ready. Yeah, it's melted. So I'm just going into... Actually, before I do that, I need to glue it down! That'd be a great idea. It's a floating piece of paper. No, it's not gonna help. Let's glue this down. Gotta hurry though before it starts producing bubbles. You don't want bubbles in your wax. Unless of course you want bubbles. It's up to you. Actually, let's go this way. Let's do that way. Alright. I'm not trying to get too close to the edge, because if I do, once I put the seal down, it's going to spread and I don't want it leaking off the envelope. So do that. Stop the llama. There we go. I'm just gonna wait a second. Blow out the candle. Just gonna push you aside a little. There we go. And now we wait a second. But because I have zero patience. I'm gonna go ahead and start inking a little bit of the inside here, just so it's not blindingly white. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that if you want to leave it white. I just, you know, I like the aged look. I like the distressed look. It's one of the reasons why I really liked going into junk journaling is because the the aged look, the, you know, is that to say Victorian era? <laughs> If you like the Victorian era, I love it. I like watching the, um, I think it's BBC. Oh, I don't remember what company did it, but oh, I am stuck. Why am I stuck? There we go. Um, one of the eyelashes got stuck to the Velcro. Yeah. There was, I think BB BBC created a show, which was like, living on a Victorian farm and they had three historian like an archaeologist like two archaeologists and one historian it varies like depending on which ones because they they didn't just have a Victorian era they had Edwardian and all these other farms and everything and they had uh, a historian and an archaeologist and it'd be like another archaeologist or another historian with them and I love watching those like I actually rewatch them <laughs> <laughs> how much I love them um, but when you start seeing a lot of older things in the modern era they're obviously aged and I just really like how that looks there we go I like that I don't know if you can see it the little llama in the center it's so cute llamas are so cute so we have that I know it's kind of, how I look at it, I'm like, flowers, butterflies, llama. You gotta have your llama in there. Um, I'm gonna put words here. I wanna have words. I'm 
Be you bravely. Yes. I like that. And we're going to distress it because we can. Uh, I want to pull in a little bit of blue. Let's do blue. And I'm just going to really gently brush on this. Really. Super gently add a little bit of blue. There we go. <gasps> oh, I have an idea. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're gonna add a little bit of blue to this ribbon. Because we can. Uh. Ooh, I like that. I don't know if you can tell. It's just a tiny bit of blue. To add a little bit of texture. Well, I, I don't want to say texture, sorry. Coloring. Oh, I really like that. Okay, I'm gonna add a little. Because if we can add browns for distressing, why not add blue for color? It's a little bit distressing. What is it? Um, there's a word for it in. I see a lot of that technique where it's kind of like aging, but then add like a little bit of blue or color, and it's uh. <sighs> What's it called? It'll come to me later. It's where the technique where they add layers. You see this a lot, a lot, a lot in like um, interior design. We have furniture, and you put on some chalk paint, and then you put like three different layers. And like the bottom layer will have like a color, and then you like sand it off in certain areas. I have a word for it. I can't remember it right now though. All right, that's up. So we're gonna work on this side. And I think for this one, I kind of want to leave it like an insert in a way. I'm wondering if I want to leave leave like pockets. Hmm. Let's see. Do I have enough paper for pockets? Whip out my envelope. Busy. I like that paper. I, <laughs> I keep on pulling out because I want to use it. I think I might use it for something else. Not for this. But... Yeah, I have all sorts of goodies in here. It's like different papers, different cards. Nothing in there though that I see that I want to use. Ooh. Kinda liking that. Might just run with that. 